Evening YouTubers. So I'm going to try a different format tonight. So I want to raise your attention to an article that came out. Uh, in fact, I saw it in open source feed, uh, which then refers to um, uh, this article, this main article here. We'll just uh, bring that up just now. So, and I couldn't help my, myself, but um, kind of f for the first time ever, feel like I need to uh, create a, a video in defense of uh, free and open source software um, for a specific product a distribution. So I'm not a Fedora main user, but I see and recognize the good work that Fedora does, even if I disagree with some of it. Uh, for example, I don't really agree with System D, uh, but it does have its place um, for those people who need a full system management approach. Uh, it's there. This article isn't exactly about that. It's actually about some other issues with uh, Fedora as a desktop. And I kind of want to raise raise those now. So the article first goes through the, um, the installation. And that I'm going to leave uh, to you to read. This guy makes a sort of comparison between uh, OpenSUSE 42 um, and but this is where I think I'm going to start. So it says here that it's difficult to tell one distribution apart uh, from another using the same desktop, which is completely ridiculous. I'll show you why. And the image, in fact, that that article uses shows that this is Fedora. And this is no watermark um, on that image. In fact, it's part of the wallpaper that you expect to have. Now it's true that GNOME is not exactly customised that much, but you will find that there are distributions out there that go out of their way to customise GNOME. That's not what Fedora is about. Fedora is a... you can look at their page, but basically forever in its history, Fedora has been a early release for early technologies coming out in free and open source, showcasing the best of what's available in free and open source. We'll get that, get that back to that later too, about that underscoring free and open source. Secondly, I want to talk about the lack of support for multimeter files, uh, even after installing Codex. I actually found this to be a load of nonsense. I find Rhythmbox to be a little bit difficult to use. I tend not to use graphical applications, as you guys are well aware. I tend to use command line ones if they're available, even so much as wrapping them up in a script if I want to play a certain set of files or whatever like that, then I'll, I'll do that. Um, but that doesn't suit everyone. But nonetheless, I found that I was able to play an MP3 extract from one of my videos uh, easily enough. Um, this is due to the fact that a patent um, coverage uh, for MP3 is no longer there since it's such an old codec. It's now basically lost any coverage from patents. Uh, you can actually see this. If you go to um, uh, fedora.org, look at the wiki in regards to MP3, you'll see that now that... Um, they're able to now include mp3 decoding. Now that goes back to my free and open source uh, uh, statement earlier and I should have added royalty unencumbered so uh, and patent unencumbered. It's really important to know that um, Fedora basically will only uh, allow open technologies. Um, so there's an argument to which why they don't include FFmpeg for example which includes a whole bunch of codecs. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that it might be a little bit difficult for them to sift through FFmpeg and remove what the offending, the offending part is. They just choose to avoid altogether using GStreamer framework, which works for them. You know what I mean? They're not going to include um, HG64 or, or whatever or the like, but they will include Codex, and they're proving here that the goodwill. They, where possible, they'll include Codex. But you know, MP3 is ancient. Anyone wanting to use MP3, in my view is kind of, you know, really behind the times because, uh, you know, there are, other, there are others like Vorbis, which is even getting behind the times, and now the new Opus, um, which is now included as part of the WebM, WebM spec when you um, create videos. So, yeah, take a look at those on Wikipedia. So this is, this is really not fair. I'll actually um, try and demonstrate this point just now. So um, let's just have a look at the pack, play cue, my music... Um, we might even be able to get it to play just off the cuff. I'll see what I could do. Again, I'm not really au okay, uh, with all of these, these things, but let's just see if we can add it to play cue. Okay. And you can see now, 
that it is actually playing the MP3. I can't hear it through my headset at the moment because I'm using my headset as a recording instrument with through a, a high fidelity recorder or a reasonably high fidelity recorder and dictaphone. But yeah, nonetheless, I've tested it before, it does play. So that argument doesn't wash. Basically, it's an ignorant argument. It's it's not res it's not representative of the current times. And GStream is uh, actually supporting this. It's not FFmpeg. So we'll pause that and uh, we'll move on. Okay, um, so yeah, we've said that. Unavailability of proprietary bracket packages such as Steam and Google Chrome in GNOME software. Now, let's get this straight. Fedora does not promise you that proprietary software is going to be available. They have a, a, a an article about forbidden items. In fact, I might even be able to search for it in here. So I'll just have a look. Fedora forbidden... Uh, right, forbidden items. Okay. Go and take a look at this. If you want your distro to support forbidden items, then go get that distro. You know, there are plenty of Debian-based distributions out there. Go and use them. You know, you don't need to use Fedora necessarily. If that's what you want, it's not fitting your use case. Go and use it. You know? I don't even know if Steam is suggested in here. Let's just see if it is. No, it's not. But nonetheless, right? Now, I could have gone l looked through um, Steam's dependency list, and I, frankly, I don't have the time to do that. I spent already a couple of hours like fiddling with with Steam today. So what I did, right, was I did install RPM Fusion um, for the free and non-free stuff. Then I installed Steam. Then I removed it and only left the required dependencies there. The proof in the pudding is this, okay? I go in here and I'll type Steam in. There is no Steam. Okay, I've got a directory and stuff like that and that I've been fiddling with, okay? But, let's, I'll just go in here. Sorry for to take the magic away for a moment. But if I go, um, let's have a look. Hopefully, hopefully it's in there. I think it is. Um, CD. Again, sorry for not having this queued up, but you know, it's one of those things. So, um, uh, maybe. Yeah, I think it's in here. Now let's just do it. Oh, okay, so it's saying it's not going to load that, but it's a lot of junk because I actually loaded it earlier. There you go. Bang. So I'm into Steam. Okay? It's nonsense. This guy just didn't put the effort in. Now, you could use RPM Fusion because RPM Fusion installed it perfectly fine, but I told you I did my due diligence and I removed it and I only just grabbed the dependencies. I could have grabbed the dependency list and installed all the dependencies manually and then done it that way. Is Fedora meant to be a Steam platform? No. I can demonstrate that very, very simply. Okay? Uh, they are kind enough to allow Steam uh, to be su supported on Fedora to some extent, but if I go like this, if I go um, if I go Steam powered and look up Ubuntu, it's probably going to say like there is it's their preferred distribution. Ubuntu is their preferred distribution. They also have Steam OS. So if you want to if you want to do that, then fine. Uh, let's have a look. Linux. I don't know. Again, I'm just sort of, um, I haven't queued this up. But no, look, um, oh, I can't see that there. I might even be able to, no, it's just going to get me the deb. Ubuntu, our favourite, yeah, um, maybe I just read that wrong, so I'll just go to here anyway. There. Ubuntu is our favourite version of Linux. Okay? It should be GNU plus Linux, but anyway. The point of it is, is that that's what they support. Okay? So don't whinge when Fedora doesn't give you that out of the box. The next thing, Chrome. This is nonsense. Does anyone actually understand what Chrome is? Chrome is the proprietary version of Google. It's Google's packaged proprietary version of Chromium. I can get Chromium. No drama. Okay? 
It's not that hard. Okay? So you can get Chromium if you want. And you can compile it if you want. It's a pain in the butt to compile, trust me. You want to just compile, um, if you want the web browser, just compile Firefox if you want the latest of latest. But Fedora is usually there pretty much. So that's, you know, it's... You know, it's junk. The other thing too, which really annoys me, is people go, "Oh, RPM doesn't, RPM Fusion doesn't allow the playing of codecs." Well, okay, RPM Fusion provides a nice service. It packages up certain things for you, free and non-free, and you can use them if you want to at your own. There is no warranty. You didn't pay for the operating system. You didn't pay for their service. So, you know, why, why complain? If I want something desperately, like I know Fedora's not going to pack up, FF, package up FFmpeg. I'll damn compile a thing. I'll go and compile it. I'll, I'll M player. They don't compile. M player, so I'll compile it for myself. Okay, it's no big deal. Like, uh, let's just go again. I'll go in here. And I'll go. Um, you saw it before I had a couple of files in here. So if I go oh, M player, out five. Okay, there you go. Bang! One of my previous videos shows up. Okay, beautiful. You don't need them to do that. You, you know. <laughs> Let me put this in another way. Fedora is not there at people's leisure. It's a project. They try and package up what they can in the realm of free and open source, unencumbered stuff. You know, no no patents and all that sort of stuff because they don't want to get Red Hat sued, which is understandable, you know, uh, given that they're a corporate entity. But then they go on to say, like, this is the hilarious stuff. Why not use Firefox? Okay, Firefox is there. Why not use Chromium? I mentioned false base of Chrome. But then they go into this. CentOS doesn't even... You know, they talk about using CentOS in this article, okay? I think I can find it there, perhaps. Let's have a look. I recommend CentOS or OpenSUSE. I, re I remember, okay, when CentOS didn't even have RPM Fusion support. So all these arguments about, oh, you use RPM Fusion to do this, do that. Junk. I cannot can prove it. I'll provide these links in the in the comment section below or the the summary section below. But look, uh, let's have a look. Do, do, do. Um, do, 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 do. um, look, and yeah, I've seen that for, um, CentOS Seven is on the wish list of Repo Project, but no further information. This is back in 2015. Just This is an example of misinformation and just bagging on Fedora. Again, I'm going to tell you something as well. Yes, when I first installed it, I noticed, uh, I noticed some instabilities, okay? But as soon as I updated that damn thing, it was working fine. There were no instabilities. So when they complain about like instabilities and bugs and things like that, uh, you know, junk. Junk. Junk comment. This is a clickbait article. Okay? Oh no, so many problems. This is just the sort of stuff of bad journalism. Okay? I'm sure this person might love Fedora, but if you really, really like your distribution of choice, then help them. You know, give them bug reports. I've done that before. Suggest bug fixes. They might not get implemented, but, you know, and I've had that my sh fair share of pain there where you suggest a bug fix and it doesn't get implemented. But you can contribute to your favorite open source project or free and open source project. That's what Fedora is all about. It's all about promoting free and open source, showcasing, showcasing the latest. It isn't going to be your most stable distribution out when it first gets released. It isn't going to provide you with out-of-the-box proprietary applications and that sort of thing. Hell, even Debian has re removed um, firmware packages into a restricted area. I think, uh, you know, non-free or restricted area. So you, you cannot expect these distributions that are promoting free and open source to sit there and provide you with a, and sorry, I'm going to throw it in there, a basically a drop-in replacement for Windows. That's not what they're there for. Not at all. They're there to showcase the best of free and open source. Anyway, guys, this is, I'm going to leave it right there. I'll leave you guys to take a look at the links for yourself. Um, thanks for your support. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I hope that the improved format of having my... Uh, mug on the screen, you know, um, uh, encourages a few more views, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye now.